Welcome to Toll 101, Introduction to Tolling, Toll Principles and Practices. This program is made possible through funding provided by Aegis Projects, Inc. and with the additional cooperation of Atkins, Valencia College in Orlando, Florida, and Patterson Bach Communications. Hello, I'm Marty Stone, Chief Operating Officer of Aegis Projects USA, a division of Aegis Group, and I'm joined today by Tom Nucky, National Toll Technology Director from Atkins, a member of the SNC-Lavalin Group. Toll 101 was designed to educate a variety of audiences to the unique characteristics and value of tolling as part of the approach to finance, build, and operate viable transportation solutions in North America. Today, most funding for highway maintenance and expansion comes from state and federal gas taxes. These funds have run low and are expected to continue to diminish, primarily because cars have become more fuel efficient. Though some states have increased their gas taxes, the federal tax on gasoline hasn't changed since 1993. Federal taxes go into a fund dedicated to transportation called the Highway Trust Fund. Since 2008, this fund has gone into the red. It's up to Congress to figure out what to do about the Federal Trust Fund. But states have similar trust funds with the same problems. We believe tolling is a very important part of the overall solution of the surface transportation problems facing virtually every urban area in North America. Toll 101 is divided into seven segments that are introductory in nature. They're not designed for experts or to make you an expert. They should be perfect for those interested in a high-level view of the toll industry, how tolling works, the different approaches to toll technology and operations, things that would give someone a good basic understanding of the toll business. This series will be ideal for engineering and planning students or new hires for toll and transportation agencies or for the companies that support these types of public agencies. This education would also be beneficial for elected and appointed public officials who were involved in transportation. So you can watch this series sequentially, or you can watch each section individually, depending upon your interests. Again, thank you to Tom Nucky from Atkins for helping me present Toll 101. And I hope you find this material helpful in better understanding tolling and transportation in North America. Welcome to Section 4 of Toll 101, Back Office Operations and Customer Service. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the back office operations and customer service for electronic toll organizations around the U.S. and uh, specifically taking a, a deeper dive into the customer service and operations uh, within a back office. Tom, this is uh, uh, something that, that is uh, probably a, a little uh, mysterious yeah, well, that's, uh, to most people. I think maybe we should mention just what a back office, what the word means, right, Marty? Because it might be unfamiliar to some people. Uh, back office, front office. Uh, in the toll industry, I think we grew up with a front office being the toll collectors. And then we emerged in this new back office business uh, administrative role where the back office is really the administrative pieces that traditionally went behind the collection of the toll. But now as we've evolved into electronic tolling, the back office has taken on a whole new identity where we're really servicing customers and have direct interfaces with customers. So the term back office in the toll industry is a little nuanced because we are customer facing in the back office as well. If we take a look at, at how electronic toll uh, collection is organized, I think it makes it easy for us to describe what that back office is. There are essentially five components to electronic toll uh, collection. And when you look at how they fit together and how transactions flow uh, from the roadside into this back office, uh, I think it becomes easier to understand uh, what's going on there. Of course, everything starts at the roadside. And what essentially is occurring at the roadside is that we're really not collecting tolls anymore. Mm -hmm. We're collecting data. Uh, and that data is uh, broken down into uh, three main pieces. Uh, there's the transaction itself, the time stamp, uh, the toll rate, all of that. There's the identification of the customer through a transponder ID. And there's also that video image, the image of the license plate. 
So when you have those pieces of information, you have collected essentially data at the roadside. You now have to be able to process that mm -hmm. and carry it through to either some type of a prepaid uh, debit account or into some kind of a postpaid uh, approach to sending out a bill or, or in some cases a violation. So you're, you're collecting information at the roadside and when that occurs, it gives you an opportunity to create a reporting of what that traffic and what that uh, intended revenue was supposed to be. Once uh, that occurs, the information is then transmitted to what is sometimes referred to as a back office. The first piece of information that moves over is that successful transponder read. And if we get that uh, transponder read for a valid account, uh, we create a transaction, and that transaction is something uh, that we can then move into the accounting system and uh, debit that prepaid account. And it provides us uh, with a, a very simplistic and, and low-cost approach mm -hmm. uh, to collecting the revenue. However, there's also that video component. And the video component, as we've discussed in the past, requires us to go through some kind of an image processing uh, activity, uh, one that eventually ends up reading the license plate, identifying who the customer is, and that plate read becomes a, a critical part of both of the prepaid and the postpaid process. The two of them together uh, make up that transaction. So again, very often the prepaid accounts, people with transponders, sometimes don't have the transponder in the car. Mm -hmm. So uh, the plate read then becomes the basis of the debit of the prepaid account. Uh, so it's a, a, a critical part, one, putting that information together. And I, I call this piece the financial transaction production. We actually have to assemble that information together. Uh, you call it a financial message, I think, on the engineering right. side. But I, I call it just a financial transaction. And when we do that, it also gives us an opportunity uh, to report that back through the system. And this really is our first point where we can reconcile the financial transactions or that financial message with the traffic information that has occurred at the roadside. So this is really a kind of a first point, a checkpoint, uh, where we in the back office can look at the roadside and, and determine if these two pieces of information are, are reconciling. Once all of that is, is accomplished, uh, this information then flows into, for lack of a better term, a back office system. This is a really a big piece of software. It uh, contains the account management portion of our back office. It also is where the transactions are processed. So we're managing prepaid accounts. Some of them are some of the different accounts that we talked about uh, in the past, mm -hmm. pre-authorized accounts. This is where we maintain all the information related to customers that we already have. And when we process the transactions uh, from, from the, the roadside, we now have the, the basis for either debiting account or sending out a, a, a postpaid bill. Uh, this process also gives us an opportunity to create another set of reports and to reconcile this information backwards through the system as we move, again, from the roadside to the production of the financial transaction and the messages, and then eventually into the back office system where we process that transaction and begin the financial accounting part of, of the process. Uh, and that's really what that next step is. Once we have uh, understood that uh, the transaction message has, has come through. Once that message has been carried all the way through into the back office, it then goes into uh, an accounting system that allows us to begin to track the money, not just uh, the, the traffic. And as you can see, we're, we're setting up a system of tracking both the flow of the traffic information and the flow of, of the money through a, a back office. And that accounting section is where the, the accounts receivable come in that we talked about in a previous module. Uh, absolutely. In, in fact, uh, this is also where we uh, generally in, encounter the auditors. Yes. Uh, our auditors are 
uh, generally independent. Uh, they work either for the public agency or for the state, and their job is to oversee this process and make sure all the bean counters are counting the beans properly uh, and, that, and that there's nothing leaking out uh, uh, through some kind of a sieve somewhere in this uh, back office operation. The financial support services is, is uh, the fourth piece of, of this process. And these are those things that are ancillary uh, to our operations. They are the, the people who, who print the invoices, who mail uh, the invoices. Uh, they're, they're often uh, outsourced activities uh, that are there to support uh, both the financial and the physical operation uh, of the back office. But the reason they're on this chart is that they're connected to that back office system. So they are part of what needs to be audited in the process and reported. And as you can see, they also provide another set of reporting activities that allow us, again, to reconcile that transaction. Uh, sometimes we call it cradle to the grave, mm -hmm. uh, uh, walking the transaction through this process and then following it with a set of reports. And it's those reports of the transaction against the reports created in the accounting side that allow us to actually provide a first class audit. And there are, I, I think it's called an SOC 16 audit, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm probably, uh, this is not my area <laughs> of expertise on the financial side. But going through those audits is how the public agency uh, is assured that all of the money that they were supposed to collect was collected, or if it's a receivable, where that receivable stands within the process, how much is owed, who owes it, uh, who they need to send to collections. Uh, all of this uh, comes through this kind of reporting and auditing and accounting process uh, that, that is handled within the back office. And then this entire system is connected to the fifth element, the customer service. And this makes the back office uh, very unique in terms of what we used to do on the cash side mm -hmm. versus the way electronic toll collection. If you remember when we talked about cash, uh, we have toll booth operators who have that relationship uh, with, with the customer. Uh, now our relationship is really through a set of customer service representatives who are connected to all of this information uh, through that back office system. And when a customer calls in uh, to either open an account or has an issue with, with a past transaction, uh, that customer service rep has to be able to drill down through that back office system and be able to find what, what happened for that customer, be able to, be able to research and investigate a transaction, a violation, uh, so that they can provide that information to the customer and resolve whatever issue that that customer has. Uh, it's actually a tough job. Uh, that's why the back office system is so important, that it be able to uh, easily and functionally allow that customer service rep to be able to find that information for the customer. That's right, the back office is really the heart of the modern toll agency. No longer is it the front facing toll collectors because many of them are no longer out at the lanes because we have electronic tolls, all electronic tolling. That customer experience is now oftentimes in the back office. And how an agency determines how they're gonna divvy up their organizational work in the back office is all, often uh, difficult, but it's also different for different agencies as well. We're gonna talk now a little bit about how we divvy up some of that work uh, flow process that you mentioned. So the graphic now shows the different possible boxed areas that are often seen as, as uh, bundled together and either sometimes done internally by the agency or outsourced through an R a competitive RFP process. When agencies make the decision to outsource, they're looking for economy of scale. They're also looking for efficiencies and innovations that the private industry can bring. And sometimes an agency will determine what's better to do it in-house to better meet their customer needs or their agency philosophy with their customers. So we see mixed models here. The first one we're gonna talk about is where the roadside piece, that the piece where the transactions are generated as the vehicles go through, is oftentimes a separate piece, can be uh, contracted out to firms and companies that specialize 
and the technology on the roadside because as we talked about in module three, I believe it was, uh, that, that piece is, is uh, you don't have many second chances to get the transaction right. <laughs> and and uh, when a vehicle yeah, goes through at 100 miles, miles an hour, an hour right? it's, it's not gonna happen. So uh, there are firms that specialize in that technical detail. And then there's also companies that uh, specialize in the image review piece and have very efficient tools to do image review and increase accuracy and performance of image review. So that would be grouped in the operational back office where we put the plate reads and, and merge those together to create a financial transaction such at the end of the day, we either have a transponder or a license plate, but some way to identify the customer and then that creates a financial transaction. So that may be a separate piece of work that then could be offered to the third element in this graphic, which would be the commercial back office, which would cover all those other aspects including the customer service piece and, and the reporting and all the systems pieces that make the transaction billable to the customer. So the, this is really a, a process of specialization, uh, defining um, either in-house or, or contractors who specialize and, and who have developed an expertise in these different areas as opposed to uh, one group or uh, uh, especially one agency trying to do everything uh, here by themselves. Right, and we see that within the industry there's different models and the next slide is going to talk a little bit about a, a difference there. In this model, uh, you have the roadside piece as a separate entity perhaps, and then the entire back office piece including the generation of the financial message, image review, customer service with the CSRs that, which are the customer service representatives, and then all the financial pieces in the back office, billing, et cetera, that's all bundled into one as well. And so here, whenever we look at these models, we want to see where those interface points are, right? And as an agency writes a procurement document, they want to make sure those interface points are very clearly spelled out as to who's responsible for sending the transaction, who's responsible for receiving it, and then at the end of the day, what the performance metrics are for each of these. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Tom, this, this particular model is, is a, I think, an older approach uh, that has been used in tolling. And, and one of the reasons I, I think toll agencies have started to move away from this model, and you can see it across the bottom, is that virtually all of the reporting, other than what comes from the roadside, is really held within one operation. So if something goes wrong, it makes it more difficult to find uh, not just where the problem is, but who's responsible for it. And considering the amount of money that flows through these uh, various toll operations, uh, having some independent lines of demarcation between these uh, various activities and the independent reporting that occurs as the transaction moves through the system, I think has now, uh, people have recognized that there's real value in having that independent reporting. That independent reporting and auditing is critical, and I think you're right, this model is, uh, is not used, uh, it's a traditional model, but it's, it's not used as, uh, in the future as much as it was in the past, because as you break pieces apart, it's easier for you to outsource those over time, and perhaps easier for an agency to be able to outsource those on the second or third go around of that outsourcing contract. So. Uh, the next model is going to show the combination of the roadside and the back office operational piece, meaning the entire creation of the financial transaction from the electronic toll on the roadside where it goes, the car goes underneath the gantry, all the way to the image review is all bundled under one contract or entity, and then that's delivered to the commercial back office, which then just focuses again on those financial aspects, the customer service aspects and the reporting aspects. And this one has uh, multiple levels of reporting interfaces. So you get even more clarity perhaps as to, as to how each of your two contractors are doing in this example. So this, this model here is one that I'm starting to see a lot of mm -hmm. uh, in, in the, the toll business right now, where the uh, roadside operator, it's outsourced uh, to, to a private operator and they're responsible for the, the image review. And, and I've even seen the image review split between the, the automated portion of the image review and the manual portion. So there are even refinements of, of this model 
that allows the commercial back office maybe to do the manual image review mm -hmm. and, and the operational back office that is the roadside operator uh, doing the automated or the systems uh, re review of the image. Uh, but, but we're seeing this, this model quite a bit. Now this next model is going to be a refinement to the previous model and the fact that in this model the, the back office system, the software and hardware that run all the transactions of the heart of the toll collection here, that can be broken out separately from the previous model. And in that case, you're looking for a, a vendor or a company that is an expert, or maybe it's an internal entity that's an expert in the operation and maintenance and further enhancement to that computer system. And these systems develop rapidly. They change quickly in the, in the world of IT nowadays. A lot of innovation is occurring in software and the processes that drive the software. So sometimes we see this is an emerging model where the back office system piece is separate from the other operational pieces. Uh, the the uh, uh, back office system uh, contractors or software developers, and that's really what this is, this is a, a very <laughs> expensive uh, piece of software uh, that is developed uh, by a, ver a, a very specialized contractor. This uh, division of the back office system as a separate piece could actually be applied to all of the other models. That's correct. So uh, we're, we're seeing a number of different approaches uh, being taken by toll agencies in their back office, depending upon their size, their complexity. Maybe if, if they're doing other things, some toll agencies are looking at combining their activities with transit operations. Some of them have parking. Mm -hmm. And the more sophisticated they become, the more that back office system software uh, becomes critical to, to their operations. But no matter what uh, uh, model they're using or what kind of a system, all of these uh, five major pieces are going to be found uh, from the roadside through the customer service op operation. And when you look at the back office and that customer service, uh, this is also one of the areas that, that is changing a lot. Uh, again, we used to have our relationship with the customer uh, from the toll booth. It was face-to-face. -face. Uh, now it's through uh, what we call a contact center. Now, originally they were called phone centers because most of customer service used to be done over the telephone. But now with the emerging uh, 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 sophisticated activities related to the Internet, uh, email, chat, uh, even direct mail is still a, an activity that, that's part of a contact center. And there are, are some new uh, approaches that include mobile applications and even uh, automated uh, uh, chat, uh, part of an AI approach. Uh, there are some really interesting things being done in the contact center world. And most of these back offices in uh, the toll business are fairly large. We're talking about anywhere from 100 to 1,000 people operating in a contact center. Some of the easy pass back offices uh, uh, in the New York, New Jersey area have upwards of 1,000 people. And most of the large agencies around the US in their back offices, it's not uncommon to find uh, anywhere from two to 400 people uh, working in, in the back office. So uh, this is, it puts us in, into the people business, but in a different way. Instead of uh, a group of toll collectors at the roadside, uh, we now have uh, a, a group, and sometimes a larger group of people providing customer service in the back office. And, and we see in the back office a lot of uh, technologies as well to support those uh, those remote services to allow the customer to have the experience with the toll agency and that brand, but not necessarily in the office. So we see, uh, aside from the walk-in centers that most agencies have where you can have that contact with a rep, we see the kiosks that can be set up remotely. Uh, they can be in a storefront kiosk, they can be at a mall or other place where the customer can check their account balance, they can perhaps even buy a transponder, they can add money to their account, and those don't even have to be branded kiosks, they can be Kiosks that do other things like bill pay and others. There's, pl there's plenty of commercial kiosks out there that we see toll agencies are linking their customers' accounts to. So the customer can go and pay a bill, also add money to their toll account as well. 
Uh, we also see mobile CSC satellite services where we see promotional opportunities for Tolchis to go out and spread the word about the product they offer, the transponder technologies or the accounts they offer. And they can go out to mobile areas and set up uh, displays and market the transponders directly to special event areas. So this is part of a, an overall outreach program that goes beyond just the back office, just answering the phone or answering an email. Uh, it's a proactive part, I think, that, that toll agencies uh, uh, undertake that goes well beyond the normal customer service that you often find uh, from, from private companies. Uh, in terms of, of the transponder side of the business, uh, that, that management of the transponder is, is really a critical element because that's a, a unique a product. It's provided by the private sector, but it's normally sold by public agencies. That's right, and uh, sometimes you see these transponders can be sold in, in retail locations, uh, uh, but the, it all comes back to the agency's ability to manage that delivery to the transponder of the customer. Uh, now everybody expects to get overnight delivery of devices or, or purchases on Amazon. Some agencies even offer their transponders through Amazon. So the, the ability to fulfill and keep the retail sales going is strong. Agencies, believe it or not, some have uh, tagged populations, customers of the transponders that they've sent out, 100,000, others into the multi-millions of tags that they've sent out through their distribution centers. And so they're not just looking for that initial contact, they're also looking for ways for customers to reload their account, to put money back on their transponders. Customers don't always have to have a credit card or a debit card to maintain their balance. There's cash-based alternatives through replenishment centers. There's reload lanes by some agencies where a customer can pull up in a lane, put money, cash money onto their transponder. There's a lot of innovation going on there, but it all ties back in the end to how do they reconcile that? How does the agency make sure that through these remote and distributed sales, they're able to reconcile the transactions and make sure the accounts are all, all up to snuff? You know, when, when we think about the investment that agencies make in the roadside equipment, sometimes we forget about the investment in the transponder itself uh, that not only the agencies have made, but the customers have made. That's true. Uh, some of these uh, older transponders were, were quite expensive. I know we're getting to a much lower cost tag, but it's still something that the customer has, has bought and paid for. And in terms of, of that transponder, again, uh, the transponder and the, and the video image and all this back office operations really rolls up into one very important activity, and that's revenue collection. And how you manage that, that revenue and how you process the payments has become a huge part of back office operations. Uh, today, uh, the modern uh, toll agency employs a wide range of approaches uh, to managing the money, to managing the payments uh, that are coming in from, from the customers, all the way through credit card processing uh, to uh, what we call a lockbox. Uh, uh, a lockbox is a uh, activity where the customer sends their payment in, but they don't send it actually to the agency. They send it to a bank or they send it to a, a credit card processing uh, or financial processing center which actually collects the payment, reconciles all, all of that money, and then sends it uh, to the agency. This sometimes is a much more efficient way uh, and it, it removes the uh, activity of handling the cash or the checks as they come in uh, from the agency back office. So there's a security element uh, related to it as well. There's also uh, the uh, Federal Reserve has come up with a process called Check 21. Uh, it allows you to process checks electronically at your uh, local operation. And you can actually scan the checks and electronically deposit the checks into your bank account, the agency bank account, and then destroy the check because you have a, essentially a scanned image of the check and the Federal Reserve now allows that uh, as, as the basis of processing the check. What it has done is it has shortened the time frame for uh, processing a check. It used to be that checks would go on hold for anywhere from 
from three to seven days mm -hmm. to give uh, uh, an organization time to process the check. From the customer side, they had time to put money in the account. But uh, today, with Check 21, it's almost instantaneous uh, that that check goes into the account and clears, generally clears within 24 hours. So that part of the business has, has changed as well. Speaking of change, this is a significant area that's changed on this, on this slide. We now have uh, remote or third-party providers that are willing to come in and build applications, whether they're based on your mobile phone or other ways, to make direct contact with the toll agency. And some of these are, are very innovative, and I think this is really a future growth area in the toll industry where the toll agency isn't necessarily creating the interface for the customer, a third party is. And so in these, uh, some of them have uh, and provided some really neat tech technology features where they can geolocate your vehicle as it passes through the toll facility and tell you what the toll expected is and give you the option to pay it right there on your smart device. Uh, and they do that through a connection to your license plate and an account that this third party creates with the customer and then pays that back to the toll agency through a transactional basis. So the relationship, in essence, is no longer between the customer at the roadside and the toll agency. It's the customer at the roadside and one of these third-party providers who then has the relationship with the agency or a group of agencies and are responsible for paying for the transaction. So the agency still identifies the, the transaction at the roadside. Uh, they, they have a transaction. Sometimes they're not exactly sure who that transaction belongs to. And one of these third-party providers, uh, it, through their system, uh, proactively contact the agency and say, that transaction belongs to us, and here's the payment here's the for payment. it. So it's, it's really a, a change, a, a, a big change in the toll business. And then we have, have some of these third-party providers that you had mentioned before who allow people to pay for their tolling at remote sites and remote sites that have nothing to do with, with the toll business. Uh, their, their site, they're not the remote uh, walk-in centers uh, of the toll agency. They're drug stores and, and convenience, convenience stores. stores that they can walk in and walk up to a kiosk and, and very often get help from uh, a, a, uh, an attendant and actually pay cash for their uh, toll transaction right at that site and then through an electronic uh, connection to the toll agency, the toll agency receives uh, the money and reconciles the transaction mm -hmm. uh, into the back office. So these are some really exciting things that, that are going on in the toll business. I think we're going to see more changes uh, in the future as this piece of the business uh, moves forward. And I think we're also seeing more and more, and more developments in the image review piece of the back office. And this is where technologies become even more enhanced as far as being able to match uh, license plates to customers. And traditionally, toll agencies have looked for their state DMVs to provide support and address information. When, when, the, state, when the toll agency gets a license plate, they want to match that against a known database record with the state DMV. Well, in some cases, uh, that information is not available out of state for a neighboring state through your in-state DMV. So you have to either make relationships through agreements with out-of-state DMVs, or sometimes agencies will look for commercial third-party resources to help there, where third parties can come in and help identify through skip tracing and other nationwide databases on license plates to match a license plate to a name so a bill can be created. So that's another place where third parties are becoming uh, more and more frequent. And, and on the image review side, I know that there are some tremendous advances in, in the automation and the development of new hardware and software that increases both the automation and the accuracy of, of what's going on in, in image review. But it sounds like all of this means computers, computers, and more computers uh, Which that, means that we're security. relying on, on in our business. That's a good point. So security is obviously a, um, a critical issue to toll agencies, right? You want to protect your customers' data. Toll agencies go to great lengths to protect their customers' data. And it's across the whole agency effort. So 
there are some common standards and specifications that agencies follow, and that's notably the PCI, which is the Payment Card Industry Specification, which pay market, Payment Card Industry was actually created by the, the major credit cards years ago to ensure that if you were going to use a credit card for sales, you'd have to follow certain minimum standards and safety of that data. And, th and from that, we see digital uh, security standards where they've been promulgated across the industry through PCI, and agencies have to go through, agencies and companies, third-party providers that do these services have to go through these lengthy PCI audits to prove that they've met the security standards. And based on their transaction volumes, a small agency goes through one type of an audit, a larger agency that has higher credit card transaction volumes goes through a more rigorous type of audit. But in all cases, these audits are intended to protect that customer data, to make sure it doesn't go into the hands of those that want to do malicious things with it. It's not just the hardware on the lane, it, uh, it's also the networks, it's the computer systems, how they interface within an agency and externally, but it's also the customer service representatives, because the customer service representatives may be handling or be exposed to customer contact information or credit card information, so there's rigors that have to happen to those customer contact uh, resources too. They can't bring in cell phones, typically they can't have pens and papers at their desk so they couldn't write down credit card numbers, a whole length of measures to try to protect the integrity of the security of the credit cards. But it, it's not unusual for us every day to read about some kind of hack, some kind of uh, uh, intervention into somebody's system somewhere that has exposed customer data and one of the new uh, problems that, that back offices, not just in the toll business, but all over uh, the, the country in all industries, is this ransomware uh, approach where someone hacks into your system and then brings your system down and they hold you uh, hostage, basically, until you pay a ransom and allow your system uh, to, to come back up. It's happened now at a number of transportation agencies uh, around the country, uh, specifically, and I, I won't mention the, the We're name not mention of the agency, names. but, but uh, a large transit agency on the west coast of the U.S. Uh, was hacked, and uh, their system was, uh, their, their revenue generation system was down for about three days, and it was a, a fairly low ransom. I think they wanted a couple hundred thousand dollars, and uh, uh, the agency said, no, we're not going to, we're not going to bend uh, the knee to, uh, to these hackers. And unfortunately, by being down three days, they lost millions of dollars in revenue. So it's, it's really an unfortunate situation. Uh, very often, public agencies and, and private organizations will pay the ransomware, and then after the fact, they'll look for how these people got in, and they'll try and correct that, because their losses are far more than and the ransom, and that's what these, uh, these hackers are depending on, uh, that, that these organizations will understand that, that the, uh, uh, the cure is a whole lot worse than the disease. So they pay the ransom, and then they figure out what, what went wrong. Well, and that's fix why cybersecurity is so important, and it's an active element of every toll agency. And to prepare for those disasters when those happen are important, too. So most agencies have disaster recovery plans where it's a disaster from a hack type of environment, it's a disaster from a loss of key staff, or also it's a disaster from the loss of the hardware, the technology, the computers, the servers. Some agencies used to just have one computer server room servicing their entire operation in one location. A fire hits, a storm hits, then they're out of service for an extended period. And there, there's examples of that happening in the industry. Now most agencies have gone to disaster recovery where they have computer uh, hardware solutions at multiple locations, or they farm them out to the cloud and such that they're protected that way. But having a, a rigorous disaster recovery plan for your technology and your operations is critical in this day and age. When, when we look at most of the uh, agencies and back office operations, disasters really don't happen that often. It's very rare for uh, a back office to burn down or, or for some uh, in, incredible weather disaster, earthquake, uh, to take out a back office. But business continuity is, that's where the minor things that, that can take your system down. How often have you called into a customer service rep and they said, I'm sorry, I can't, can't uh, uh, take care of your issue right now because our system is down. 
So uh, these kinds of backup things that we do for the disasters can also be applied for, uh, for the minor things that, exactly. that occur and that keep us running uh, what we call high availability. You have all of this information and all of these systems operating, especially uh, the computer systems, it really becomes important to have good tools to monitor them, to uh, make sure that, that you have the people in place and the right uh, hardware and software tools that you can watch what's going on and make sure you're staffed properly. Uh, we're, uh, it, it puts us in the human resource business. It puts us in, uh, like you said, the cybersecurity business. Uh, running a back office uh, means uh, toll agencies are doing things that are, are just very remotely connected to the actual toll collection itself. Uh, on the HR side, running a contact center uh, means that you have to have uh, enough people there to be able to handle customers, uh, answer their phones in, in a reasonable amount of time, and give them good service. And the problem with running a contact center is that uh, customers don't all call exactly at the same time every day. You have to have enough people at certain times of the day to deal with the peaks and valleys that occur uh, with, with any contact center. And that's why having a good workforce management is now part of a toll agency's back office operations. Again, it's not just collecting the money, it's providing that, that service. And having good uh, employee programs, training programs, employee engagement programs, because some of these back offices, again, have uh, two to 400 people in there, uh, you are really in the people management business, not just the toll management business. Uh, and, and, and to do that, you have to have ways to monitor those employees and reward them for doing a good job. So most of these agencies will employ some kind of scorecard uh, for not just uh, the individuals, but the, the various groups that work within their back office. And then there's a relationship between the outsourced vendors who provide these back office services and the agency. Uh, we call them KPIs, uh, key performance indicators that uh, that's how a, a toll agency normally manages an outsourced vendor. They'll have a series of service level agreements, key performance indicators that the agency says to, to the outsourced vendor, Here's the uh, level we want you to operate at. Here's, uh, and, and here's how we want to measure you. And they generally have some kind of a guide uh, that identifies all the measurement formulas, the things that the uh, operator is supposed to do. This is how you get paid. You, you achieve these levels of service, you will, you will get paid X. If you don't achieve these levels of service, there's usually penalties. Uh, involved, and very often if you exceed those levels of service, there are some additional rewards that, that an or organization can achieve by doing it. So it, is, it, it puts the toll agency into a whole new level of management to be able not just to manage the people, but to manage the overall operation level of service that their customers are, are going to receive. And then monitoring all of these computer systems requires uh, some pretty sophisticated uh, software. Uh, very often you're, you're monitoring uh, the databases, uh, how the computers are working, how fast they're working. Uh, th those are really important. And to do that, you have to have uh, monitoring uh, software and, and hardware systems that are real time. You have to know uh, when the problems are occurring so that you can address them as quickly as possible because customers are usually waiting on the phone to have their question answered or, or their issue resolved. You know, and, and, and uh, I'd like to just add to that, Marty, that's an important point because you're measuring a lot of different data here. And I like the old expression that you can't improve what you don't measure. So if by measuring these, you're able to provide continual improvement in the processes and even the people's training to deliver the details you need. That, that's a great point. We even measure 
<laughs> I, I mean, some people might find this funny. We even measure the air conditioning systems that cool down the computer rooms. Because if they fail, then the computers overheat and they fail. So it, it's, it's amazing how many little pieces need to be monitored and measured to ensure that the operation goes on uh, successfully. We see this in all kinds of support systems uh, that tell us, uh, again, how well the hardware, the software, and, and the people are, are, are doing. And then there are standards throughout the industry that we use uh, to support uh, the way we manage. And getting those measurements, there are key performance indicators that are consistent through all agencies that do this type of work. And, and then there's tools and other outside entities to help measure those against throughout not just the toll industry, but the contact industry itself, whether it's a financial contact center or a toll contact center. They all have certain metrics. Uh, and it's, so it's important to measure those and to be able to place an individual agency against the industry metrics on that certain category. I think that's what this slide kind of describes. Uh, is, you know, these measurements are often contract measurements as well, where an outsourced provider provides the, the call center staff, the, the contact staff, and they have to meet these metrics, or if they don't, they are penalized certain dollar amounts to, to ensure they are meeting the contract metrics. So I, I've, I've had a number of people in the, in the toll business tell me that, that there are no places where you can go to get this kind of information. Uh, this is one example. Benchmark Portal is a, a not-for-profit organization out of Purdue University. And, and they do this not just for the toll industry, but like you mentioned, uh, they provide uh, this kind of information uh, for uh, multiple industries that, that operate contact centers around North America. Uh, and I found them to be uh, really outstanding in terms of being able to identify what the current standards are in the business and then be able to hold your uh, operation up against those standards to see how well you're doing. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at, at some of the things, and I know there's an awful lot of information on this particular screen, but these are just a sample of the kinds of things uh, that, that are uh, reviewed by Benchmark Portal, uh, all types of, uh, again, metrics for answering the phone, answering emails, how long it takes to uh, do certain kinds of activities, what the standards are, what the averages are in the industry, and how much they cost. Yeah. Uh, because uh, running a back office is a very expensive part of a toll agency's cost structure. Uh, it's part of that toll collection, overall toll collection cost. And understanding how much it costs to run a back office and to do individual tasks within that back office uh, gives a, a manager a good understanding of how well they're doing and, and where they need to improve. Uh, without standards and measurement, uh, improvement is, is not something that, that generally happens. So in, in today's uh, presentation on the back office and customer service, we've really looked at an awful lot, lot of, of different uh, areas. things. Uh, we've looked at how electronic tolls are organized, how the back offices are organized, from the roadside all the way through the customer service uh, activity. And then we've looked at all the pieces of customer service itself. Uh, from the contact center operations all the way through the performance standards. Uh, this again is a listing of all the things that, that uh, we encountered uh, today and covered. We, we certainly hope that uh, people have uh, gotten something out of this presentation. I know it's a deep dive in, into the back office and it's not something that, that you would normally think about uh, when you think about a transportation agency, uh, but, but I hope it, our, our uh, audience found it valuable. Uh, my name is Marty. And I'm Tom. And we hope you've enjoyed this look at uh, the back office operations and customer service of tolling. This program is made possible through funding provided by Aegis Projects, Inc. and with the additional cooperation of Atkins, Valencia College in Orlando, Florida, and Patterson Bach Communications.